Not so long ago, John Jewell woke up one morning and set out on what he thought would be a typical day. Unfortunately, he was in for an awful surprise. Went to work, went for my lunchtime workout. Actually, I'm a swimmer. I got in the pool, swam for 30 minutes. When I got out of the pool, a third of my vision was gone. John had suffered what's called a detached retina. The retina is a layer of tissue at the back of our eyes that makes it possible for us to see. It catches light and sends that information to our brain. Any damage to the retina can threaten our eyesight, and this was no exception. It was like, this is bad. I gotta get on the phone and call the doctor. Because I, I knew that for you to not lose your vision, that they needed to do surgery right away. The good news for John is that eye surgeons can fix a problem like a detached retina and an impressive array of other eye issues. But the unique properties of the eye make this a challenging environment in which to work. When physicians are operating on the eye to correct blinding conditions, because the tissues that they're looking at are so, so delicate and so small, they have, have to look through a microscope to do the surgery while they're manipulating surgical tools with their hands. The tissues are so delicate that they actually have a very hard time feeling the tissue with their hands, and so they're mostly guided by their eyes. Those microscopes help a great deal, but they still only let doctors see the surface of the eye during surgery. Outside of the operating room, doctors have been able to see below that surface thanks to a technology called optical coherence tomography, or OCT. Just as ultrasound lets us see a baby developing in the womb, OCT allows doctors to see deep into the structure of the eye to diagnose and treat disease. And so, doctors could use OCT's power to examine patients like John Jewell before surgery and after surgery, but not during surgery. This gap frustrated John's doctor, Cynthia Toth. So if you say, I'm using it before, I'm using it after, why wouldn't I want that information during surgery? Why wouldn't that make me better to know whether I had removed that little piece of tissue from the surface. And so I think the patients can very much understand if my goal to improve your vision is to get rid of that piece of tissue, knowing that I've done it efficiently and that I'm done, that I don't have to keep pushing and searching, is there any more left? I can stop touching and leave their eye alone, probably would result in better outcomes. Driven by this conviction, Dr. Toth turned to biomedical engineer Joe Isaac with a question. Could we eventually develop an OCT system that we could use during surgery? The first thing that was done was surgeons took handheld OCT technology and actually used it during pauses in surgery. So they would operate for a while until they really needed to know what an OCT image looked like. They would actually move the microscope aside, bring in a handheld OCT, image the patient. That worked well. It got them the information that they needed, but it required a several minute disruption of surgery and actually moving around of some of the surgical equipment. And so Dr. Toth became very interested in, in, in incorporating OCT into the actual surgical microscope. Dr. Isaac set to work, along with a company he helped found, and did just that. Other companies followed suit, ensuring that intraoperative OCT will be available to help more and more patients, just like John Jewell. Thanks in part to this new capability, Dr. Toth was able to give John some very good news. Dr. Toth came in and she said, the first thing out of her mouth is she said, I can fix you. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. And as these intraoperative OCT systems get more powerful, they're giving surgeons like Dr. Toth the promise of one day seeing and operating on our eyes with full 3D access. So it's kind of like Google Earth, right? So I'm looking down there at the street, but now I can come down and do street view, and literally I can be standing on the retinal surface. I can walk around and look under the membrane, behind the membrane, and check different views before, during, and after I'm finishing a maneuver. And with this, intraoperative OCT systems promise to revolutionize eye surgery in much the same way that tabletop OCT systems have revolutionized eye care outside of the operating room. Such progress is of little surprise given the enthusiasm and genuine care that these researchers and doctors are pouring into their work. For us, this is, this is extremely gratifying. Uh, we're sort of nerdy guys, we work in a laboratory like this, turning these knobs all day. To be able to go into an environment where we can actually see our technology being used on re and benefiting real, real patients is, is just great for us. It's beautiful. It's, it's artistic seeing the images that OCT produces, but it's exciting to see that these really will make a difference in outcomes for patients.